you turn in your Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 18, starting the first verse, we'd like to make mention this morning of something that I was thinking about as uh, the Lord was speaking to my heart. And today is a special day for each one of us here. And uh, I hope everybody, when I tell you what it is, realizes what it is. But it's the first day of the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You're right. Listen, you can't undo what you did yesterday. You can't do a thing in the world about tomorrow. But you can serve the Lord this day. Amen. And here in the, I want to read a, a, a something in Psalms. Uh, in, in chapter 18, or 118, in verse 24, it says here, This is the day which the Lord hath made. Amen. Now, nobody else made it. He made it. He knew what was going to happen in it. He knew what your needs were going to be before you asked. Amen. He knew how you were going to live it. But it says here, We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And so that's, that is my thought for the day. I, I, uh, I wanted to encourage everybody by that because, you know, there's so many people in this world today are always upset, and it's Christians too. Yes. Oh, I shouldn't have done that yesterday. I wonder what I can do tomorrow. Listen, yesterday's gone and tomorrow never happened. Right, amen. But you live this day for the Lord, and the Lord will be pleased in it. And you will get a great blessing out of the day. We want to, uh, as I mentioned here in, in the book of Luke, we want to read a scripture to you here in chapter 1, verse 1. I mean chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That's in chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. And here uh, we see that it gives us a, 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 a thing that we can we can do praying without ceasing. And of course, you know, it's been mentioned time and time again that we don't go around praying out loud and all this all the time because uh, <coughs> if we did, well, they'd probably be putting us in a straitjacket. But the thing of it is we can have a prayer on our hearts and we can pray to the Lord uh, in our heart and uh, uh, he will be pleased with this. Now, in, in that, I would like for you to turn over to the, the 11th chapter of Luke a minute. We're going to read just a few uh, scriptures there in uh, Luke 11 and verse 5, I believe it is. <clears throat> Well, let's, get, let's go start, let's just start with verse 1 in chapter 11. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. And Jesus said unto them, and he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. And give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now this is the same, this is the things that Jesus had said for the disciples. These are some of the things that you should remember to pray for and ask for. And notice here, uh, we, we want to say this, give us our daily bread. And of course, he has promised us that he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And, uh, you know, the cover may get thin, but it don't ever get completely bare uh, to the point of where the Lord's hand will extend a, a, a sack of flour or, or a bowl of beans or something to make the day come to. And he says, and forgive us our sins. And that's something this morning that we as God's people need to remember that regardless of how close we uh, try to walk to the Lord, there's still sin in our lives. Amen. Because, listen, we're not a sin perfect, or we're not perfect in the flesh. We may be in spirit, but we're not sin, we're not sin perfect in the flesh because of 
The flesh is a sinful thing, and it will never be completely uh, clear of that sin that he inherited from Adam and right. Eve until it dies. And when that death happens, then it will go to the ground, it will rot, it will re be resurrected, a glorified body, and then and only then will it be perfect. Amen. And Amen. we then can uh, uh, have a perfect joint as we leave this earth and go to uh, unite with our souls and our bodies, and our souls will unite together, be before the Lord, and we will be perfect. And we can walk with the Lord, be in, the, in heaven with the Lord, share all the good things that He's prepared for us. But until then, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, please forgive me and my Amen. sins. Because uh, we do sin. We do sin, and uh, those that uh, think that they can, not go, that can go through this life and not sin, and uh, I'm sure that if you've been around very many people, that that uh, they there's people that think that they don't sin, yeah. but uh, you know they're 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 deceived. Right. But anyway, this is that's beside the point. We need to ask the Lord to forgive us of our sin, have a sincere heart. Notice He says here, and uh, he, and He says, "Forgive us our sins, for we are also forgive everyone that's indebted to us." And so again. Uh, in, in that forgiving of the sin, we need to have this uh, a heart of forgiveness. If someone sins against you, if someone does something to you that they shouldn't do, and they come to you and ask you to forgive them, listen, you're supposed to have a forgiving heart. You're supposed to say, yes, uh, I forgive you. If they have a sincere heart about this thing, because that's the Christian way to do it. And uh, listen, we had to come to the Lord one time. Right. And uh, ask him to forgive us. Amen. And uh, you know he had uh, he had every right in the world to say no. Right. Uh, uh, you're 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 a sinful creature. Uh, but the thing of it is, he says he forgive those that ask him to forgive them, and uh, the price that he paid covered our debt. Amen. So Amen. these are some of the things here this morning that. Uh, but I want to notice uh, in verse five. Then he said uh, unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. And of course, this is a this is something that uh, that uh, he uses here as a uh, encouragement for us to pray. Because listen, we come to the Lord all times of the night, all times of the day, and with all kinds of problems on our hands and all this. Well, here's a man that comes to his friend's house and is asking for, for to let him borrow three loaves of bread. Now, he had a reason for this because he says here in verse 6, he says, For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, uh, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. Now, that is not the attitude of a Christian. Right. But here's the thing that the Lord is trying to get over in this parable that he's speaking to this man. He says, uh, he says, and uh, trouble me, uh, and the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. <clears throat> but notice, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he he is his friend, yet because of his impotuity, he will arise and give him as many as he needs. In other words, he's saying, if you keep on knocking on that door, and keep on knocking on that door, the man, regardless of <coughs> the, how, what kind of condition he's in, the constant worry or the constant demand for the bread he'll get up and give you that bread <coughs> and it's the same way with the Lord Jesus Christ listen sometimes we get here and mumble a little few little words and and uh, say we pray and uh, you know it don't get no farther than the ceiling right yeah. and uh, but the thing of it is when you get serious with the Lord and you get to praying to him and you still don't hear from him hey it's no time to give up Right, amen. You, you you keep on you keep amen. on and you keep on asking and you keep on asking. Listen, the Lord hears your prayer. Right. And amen. the Lord sees the sincerity in your heart 
and he hears the sincerity and listen he will open that door he will give you that blessing he will give you that relief that's in your heart uh, to uh, have that sin forgiven and 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 you know and I know too that our Christians when we sin against God there is a dead ache right in our chest. There's a, there's a yes. terrible feeling there. Right. And Amen. listen, we want to get rid of that. Yes. We, we need to get rid of it. But the thing of it is, uh, sometimes, sometimes the Lord waits a little while. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, His children, and you know, it's, it, it's the same way with people, that uh, families, uh, sometimes the children do something and uh, and the father don't let you know. He said, "Okay, I'd be all right," but then they do back again. Well, listen. After so long a time, the father decides, "Well, hey, you might need a little switching. You might need a little spanking." Right. And, and so he 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 kind of lays it on those children and lets them kind of think this thing over. And the first thing you know, uh, they realize, hey, uh, I don't need really to do that no more. Right. And so they, they come around, Daddy, uh, Mama, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry I did that. Yeah. Well, that's the same way with the Lord with us. Amen. Listen, he, he, does, he does His thing uh, in a way that gets our attention. And this is what happens here when, in, in this thing here. So he says, verse 9 says then, And I say unto you, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And he wrote this down. No, he wanted us to understand. <coughs> that if you don't run up to our Lord Jesus, give me this, give me that, give me that, and I'm gone. But no, listen, we need to take our time. We need to pray to God. We need to be earnest. We need to uh, understand that every time we say frog, he don't jump. Right. And because, listen, people, it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing to, to serve God. And we need to do it with a sincerity in our hearts. And we need to do it in the correct procedure that is pleasing to him because he has a way that we need to do it or he wouldn't put it here in his Bible. So here we can say, so uh, in verse 10, or, or verse 11, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that he is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give uh, uh, for a fish a serpent? Or if he asked a, a egg, will he give him a scorpion? Now these are some of the, the questions that uh, the, the Lord had them to write down about asking these questions. And we know this morning that if we ask the Lord uh, to give us something, or if we knock uh, and continually knock on the door, that he's going to open. And if we ask, and if we need it, and if it's in our best interest, he'll give it to us. Sometimes when we ask, He don't give it to us because it's not in our best interest. Yeah. And you know, there's so there's so much in the Bible concerning money and stuff of this nature. And you read there in one place where it says about the the man that is rich with money and all, it's easier for for him to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a, 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 a camel that is, is loaded down and the man, it says it's easier for him to go through the eye of an eagle than it is for a rich man to get to heaven. Right. Well, here's the thing, uh, and I've heard a lot of things different about the eye of an eagle and all this, but the thing of it is, uh, we have to put God first. Amen. Regardless if, we, if we've got plenty or if we've got little. And the sad part about it is we look at the people, the Rockefellers and the Trumps and all of these and say, oh, they just got all this money. But listen, they may worship that, but if we've got a thousand dollars over in the bank and we read, uh, we, we worship that, listen, we ain't no better shape than they are. Amen. Amen. And so here, here the here the guy comes along with the camel loaded down, and he can go through the eye legal easier than a rich man can get to heaven. Because listen, he will take that load off of that camel, lay it down on the ground, make that camel go 
through that needle, and then, and of course, the camel, uh, the, the camel will get through. But the man that's got all of this money, he'll never turn it loose. He'll never, he'll, he'll, he'll never turn it loose. He'll never, he'll never take it and, and, and lay it down. But that's that's just a, a parable that Jesus spoke to him. But here, in verse thirteen of this uh, Luke eleven, it says here. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Amen. And this morning, we all, as children of God, need to understand the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to understand that that Holy Spirit dwells within us when when. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for us and when God called us to be his listen that Holy Spirit came in and took up its abode with us now we we have a Holy Spirit and that's the reason why this morning that I believe that one of the things he reason that Jesus said uh, for two or three are gathered together in my midst I'll be in the midst of them and now listen if these are saved people you've got the three spirits there and listen, when there's three spirits of the Holy Spirit, there, He's going to be in the midst of you. Amen. And so you can depend on that. And uh, and and if you if you come to church and there ain't but two or three in there, hey, it shouldn't make any difference. Amen. Whatsoever we can yes. we can serve the Lord the same way. Amen. Now, I want to go back to our uh, where we started lesson in 18, uh, chapter 18 of the book of Luke, and uh, here before He was speaking the parable. Uh, in, uh, in verse 2, then he says in chapter 18, verse 2, saying, There was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither re regarded man. Now, now, this is a man here, and it, this regarded means that he <laughs> did not care or respect anybody. That's what, that's what this word regard, and it says here that he feared not God. And so this is a man that uh, is in terrible shape because one that don't fear God is a lost man, I believe. And so here we see here in verse 3, And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversaries. In other words, hey, I've got people that are being mean to me. They are my adversaries. They are my enemies. And you're the only one that I can go to. And it's the same way this morning with a, a person that is lost. He's got an adversary, the devil. He's got a, a one that's being mean to him. And the only one that he can go to is the Lord Jesus Christ. And here this woman knew this judge. And of course Jesus is using this as an example of, of a lost person. But he says here, uh, and, there are, and there was a widow in that city she came unto him saying avenge me and my adversaries and he would not for a while well, now you remember the man that come to the to the other to his friend and knocked on his door and asked for the three loaves here's the same situation the same situation now notice but in verse 4 and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, Amen. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she worries me. And so here, and and what I want, if I want to read this to you, you know, I used to know a, I used to know a man, a preacher, and he preached, and he preached, and he said, now listen. If I've done, if I've not preached right, he said, you worry God about it. You, you pray for me and you, and you tell God, hey, he's, he's, he's not preaching it right. And the man was a good preacher. But the thing of it is, this worrying here, uh, we need to worry God mm -hmm. uh, about the situation that we're in. And we need to constantly present our problems to him and continue to do it because it's just like... Uh, he was speaking over there about uh, a, a father giving his children uh, a serpent for an egg. And God here, if we worry him and, 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 and pray to him, listen, he's going to take care of our needs. And he's not a father that will give us something that we don't need. 
And so he said here again uh, in verse uh, 5, yet uh, uh, in verse 6, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust, uh, the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect? Amen. And you this morning that are saved are God's elect. Amen. The elect means that you were chosen before the world was Amen. to be his child. That's right. the elect. And God chose you before the world began and, and you are his elect. And it says here and, and in verse 7, and shall not avenge his own elect. In other words, God will not let anybody avenge you and hurt you if you cry out to him. He'll take care of you. And it may get rough, but the thing of it is, listen, God is on the throne. God is in charge of the devil. God is in charge of everything. And Amen. it may look dark and it may look gloomy, but listen, people, God is still in charge. Amen. And he'll take care of you. And it says, and shall, and shall God not avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. And so, listen, he is there on the throne. And Jesus Christ is sitting right beside of him. That's where that the Bible says that Jesus ascended to heaven and, and sat on the right hand of the Father. And Jesus is sitting there on the throne. And when these prayers come up to God, God hears Jesus say, Yes, I died for that one. I died for that one. And God says, All right. That's it. That he... He accepts that prayer, he takes that prayer, and he considers that prayer. And again, I say this morning, <coughs> if we need it, I believe he takes care of it. And if we ask something that we don't need, he understands that also. And that is a thing that may not come to pass. And so that's, that's, what, that's what I believe uh, this is all about here, this, this thing here. And so, uh, notice here, uh, in verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And so, this morning, we, as God's people, we need to continue in prayer and we need to pray, and we need to pray because it asks the question here, will he find faith on the, on the earth? Well, he may and he may not. I don't know because the question is asked. But the thing of it is, I know this. When the time comes and when the last person is saved and the, the voice from God comes out, come up hither. Listen, everything that's, everybody that's been saved, everything that's in the ground that's been saved is going to leave this earth. Amen. Amen. And it's going to be, it's going to be left with nothing but sin on it. And so, uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm sure that he will, when, when he'll see faith when he, when he calls us out. So now, notice in verse nine, and he spake this parable unto a certain. Certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, and one of the Pharisees and the other a publican. And the Pharisees said, "There's no Holy Spirit." The publican, he he believed both. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with with himself, "God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners." unjust adulterers or even as this publican he was standing there praying to god and doing one of the things that god said not do thou shalt not judge mm -hmm. and he was judging this man and 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 he said uh he's an ex he's an extortioner he's unjust he's an adulterer or even as this he, this publican but he's bragged on himself he says, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. <coughs> These are the things that he placed before God to justify himself, which are works. That's right. And the works that uh, we do 
will not accomplish salvation. They are because of salvation, right. but they are not to get you salvation. For the works uh, in Ephesians 2, I believe it is, uh, uh, the, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, think what it says. Now, Ephesians, for by works, for by works, how's it going, Larry? For by grace are you saved. Well, yeah, for, for by grace are you saved through work, for through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a work, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. This man was here bragging on the things that he had done, and he, he said, I fast twice in a week, and I give tithes. Both of those are works. Right. And, 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 and then, the, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. There's where the sinner is, needs to be. He don't need to be bragging on what he does, how much money he gives the church, how much good he does for the world out here. Because listen, those are works and they are of the flesh. The flesh is not going to be saved. But the publican said, forgive me. Right. And that's, that's where salvation starts, is asking forgiveness of your sins. And so here we see in verse 14. He says, I tell you this, man went down to his house justified, talking about the publican, uh, rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them for touching these little children. And that was his disciples. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. In Amen. other words, when you see someone out here that is crying out to Christ or, or wanting help and, and asking for mercy from Christ, listen, you do not make fun of that person. You do not swear that person. You do not say, Hey, he's too mean for this or that. Listen. That is the only way that a person can be saved, yeah. and, uh, and you can tell you can tell people what all you've done and how good you are to the world and all this. But listen, you're spinning your wheels. Mm -hmm. It's it's faith. It's, it's it's grace and faith and grace. That's all it. Well, that is the that is the lesson for today, and I hope that it will open your understanding a little bit better to some of the things that I've read. And uh, I thank you for listening to what I had to say. God bless.